In the first video I showed how to make a small spoon out of shuttering plywood just to get a feel of the material and using a variety of abrading methods to form the spoon. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how a larger spoon can be easily made from offcuts of 18 mm plywood, uh, shuttering plywood in fact. It makes sense to build the spoon in sections and here I'm using a rub joint to glue the pieces together. There's no need for clamps as the rubbing action creates the suction and the work can be then put aside to cure. I always write the time on to remind me when it was glued. Now I'm going to allow a full 24 hours for the glue to properly cure although it does set in about two hours. I then use some paper and scissors to create an attractive spoon profile template that could be glued onto the wood. It has to be positioned carefully. Then waste is shaded ready to cut on the bandsaw. A backing piece or sub base is used to minimize fiber breakout when using the bandsaw. Now I'm using my large bandsaw and because the blade uh, is so wide um, in fact too wide to cut the curves I'm first removing the bulk, the waste in straight cuts and then using a method to allow the blade to navigate around the curves. Of course if you have a smaller bandsaw with a finer blade this will be much quicker but this is a very handy technique to know because I believe a bigger bandsaw is far more versatile. Uh, this of course isn't the final finish. The disc sander attachment to an electric drill is useful for the concaves. In my workshop I have an inexpensive bobbin sander, a somewhat underrated machine for what it can achieve. Okay, so now we mark out the scoop area of the spoon. Well that's what I call it. And I'm using a small combination square as a depth gauge. A little improvisation helps in achieving the shape. Always shade waste. A drum sander is also used to get the spoon smooth and flat. And two extra bits are thickness to help with the next stage, mounting the spoon on the bench with a glue gun to route out the scooped portion. The idea is that there is ample support for the router base with the extension strips. Uh, now this is a practice piece. My Finnish student working with me had only used the router a few times before. You just need steady hands to control the tool. A radius cutter has been set up. Now we are using my favourite router but a smaller router will work just as well. OK, now the spoon proper is mounted on the bench and the router used to carefully cut the indent or scooped area working from the middle to the outside and leaving the line till the last. You know routing is very intensive so take a break for a few seconds. As long as you keep the router moving you can still do it slowly but surely. Now the spoon is carefully prized off the bench and the residue of glue chiselled off. Use a coarse abrasive paper to smooth the router indent. Aluminium oxide paper is the best. This is the most time consuming bit and a sanding block or sanding stick can be used for the straight flat sections. Tubular formers can be used to sand the concaves. I'm using the drum sander but you can do this by hand sanding of course. Uh, this removes the paper. I use the router set up in a router table with an ovolo or rounding over cutter inserted and this is to perfectly form the profile of the spoon. Inevitably there are burn marks but these can be easily removed by hand sanding. 
and the stem of the spoon is sanded by hand working through the grits. Well, I hope you'll agree that with a little time and patience, a really nice spoon can be made from this otherwise limited material, shuttering plywood. I just think it's a very attractive material. The final finish can be polyurethane varnish or better still an epoxy coating which is totally impervious. Of course there are many ways to create spoons. Uh, this video has focused mainly on abrading techniques and of course there are tools such as the power file which can be used creatively to shape spoons and other wooden objects. Well I'll explore that in another video. Thanks for watching.